Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. The headlines this morning were dominated again by information about the fires in Lahina and the number of lives that those have affected. They were also dominated by the latest news uh, indictments about former President Donald Trump. And you, like me, may be getting a little weary of reading the news every day and listening to the news. I do so because I want to be informed about what's going on in the world, but I also try to do it somewhat judiciously just for the sake of my mental health. And so I encourage you to do the same. And, and I acknowledge that my weariness is of course no, uh, of no regard uh, when we think about what people in Lahaina are suffering after they have uh, been through that devastation and lost everything, lost lives of loved ones. And so, of course, we continue to hold those folks in prayer. I do want you to take a look at the written beacon light and see the information in there about the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance response to what's going on in Lahaina. We as a denomination are offering both material and spiritual care in Lahaina at the invitation of the Red Cross. And so I'm grateful for that response uh, on behalf of our denomination. I'm grateful to be a part of a church that can respond and, and feels called to respond in that kind of way. It seems like the fire was caused by not only climate change, but also by a downed utility wire in part. And it was in an area where residents were asking utility companies to come and take a look at their infrastructure and saying that they were concerned about it. And that makes the fires all that much more tragic. So that combined with everything we're hearing about former President Trump, which is nothing new, but it's just sort of all condensed together in the most recent indictments coming out in Georgia. It, for me, it brings to mind the word accountability. That's my word for the day, accountability. I feel like as a, we long for someone to be held accountable for all of the things happening in uh, when politicians misbehave and mislead and tell lies, we want them to be held accountable. And with all the fires in Lahaina, we want someone to be held accountable. And holding people accountable, asking them to uh, examine and justify their actions is really important. But it's something that we do and need to do in a particular way. Because I always need to go to the other side of the coin. And maybe that drives you crazy. I drive myself crazy with it sometimes too. But the Bible reminds us that each one of us will also be held accountable, will be held accountable for our thoughts and our words and our deeds by God. The Apostle Paul says it in both Romans and in 2 Corinthians. And so even as we seek to hold other people accountable, rightly so, we need to hold ourselves accountable first and foremost. It's interesting the context in Romans, Romans 14, that Paul is talking about accountability and the fact that we will be held accountable by God because it's in the context of a conversation about Christians causing one another to stumble by their behavior and and by the way they judge one another and I thought that that was interesting for us to remember in part because I think that's one of the saddest things about what's happening in in, in politics and especially with the behavior of former President Trump is the way that a person of great power and influence is causing other people to stumble with the lies that are being told. And I think about the many people who were a part of the most recent indictments in Georgia and I think about the many people who have been convicted uh, I think, again, rightfully so, uh, because of their actions in storming the Capitol on January 6th. But I think it's so sad that a very powerful person is unable to, to, to see how his behavior is influencing others. And he's putting his own well-being and he's 
profiting, I think, in some ways off of the lies that he is telling. But again, I always want to come back to anybody who is a person of influence, and we all have influence in some sphere of life. Uh, you know, for me, it's in the context of the church. For many of you, it may be in the context of the church. For many of us, it's influence over our children or grandchildren or uh, neighbors who hold us in good esteem. And so each of us are also likely people of influence in some way. And so we too need to hold ourselves accountable again. Part of It's part of discipleship and it's the willingness to examine ourselves on a daily basis with God. The good news for me in all of that is that as we do that process with God, as we go through that process and um, examine uh, our days and our interactions with people and the things that we did and said and thought during the day, as we do that with God, God will always enable us to see the ways that we have been working in partnership with God and see the ways that we have been working against God. And in that process, it's my message of transformation again. God transforms us and God polishes us and uh, God allows the, the good and the beauty, the gold and silver, if you will, inside each one of us to shine. Uh, and that is in each one of us, for each of us is created in God's image. But if we, uh, if we allow the world to tarnish us too much, that image can become really hidden. The other thing that I always think about when I think about being accountable, holding myself accountable, or the, my desire to have other people held accountable, is that whenever God holds us accountable, it is with grace. And so with grace, with God, <laughs> grace and judgment are always held together hand in hand. And we will be, we will be judged, but we will be judged graciously and for not only our benefit, but for the benefit of the kingdom that God is seeking to build. So whenever we hold ourselves or other people accountable, we're also called to do it with grace and with humility. So that's where my thoughts have been going as I read the news and I am grateful to God for the grace that we are given. And I hope that God will always continue working in me and working in each of you so that we can together be a part of building God's kingdom. Thank you for listening today. And I'm always open to hearing your thoughts. Bye.